This video shows how to identify compounds in HSQC spectra. On screen you will see the spectra of seminal fluid. I go to Match, Match HSQC, I select spectra from my database, in this case the BiBioRefco database, all HSQC spectra of pH 7. More than 600. I have to define an allowed shift tolerance for proton, for carbon, so this is the search range for individual peaks I use instead of the visible peaks. For individual peaks I use instead of the visible peaks, I define a minimum signal to noise of 5 here. I check relative integrals. The check in this case is weak. This is because if you have different proton-carbon coupling constants in this pulse program of the measured sample and the reference data, then the intensity ratios may not be the same. So I will choose weak here. I expect a minimum similarity in intensity of 70%. Matching of singlets. There we have two options. So if there is a search range and if there are several peaks, in this case I will choose the highest peak. Otherwise, I can choose the next peak, the peak with the minimum distance. I don't allow missing singles in this case. Okay, now the spectra is peak picked. All the reference spectra is loaded in and now the matching is performed. After the match is finished, the result is displayed here in the panel. In the table, you will find an overview of all the compounds. So you have a column called identified with green balls if the compound was identified and red if it was not identified. Using the match quality and the match quality with several star results. So you can more easily see what was done by the algorithm. Here in this column you will see the delta ppm. So this is the shift of the individual signals with respect to the reference data. In this column you will see the relative integrals. The integrals are normalized to a single proton and then referenced to the highest signal in the spectrum. In this case this was choline and if you go here to the compound then you will see the biological information which was imported by the HMDB in this case. By clicking on a single row, now alanine is selected, you will see in the table below the individual regions here. The spectrum is loaded in and just by clicking on the column here, it is automatically zoomed into the area so you can verify if it is really there or not. If you are searching for a special compound, just enter filter. For example, valine here. All compounds which have valine in their name are listed. I click on this one here, and then I select one of the regions, and then you can easily see they are identified here. With a right mouse click, I go to Peak, Display Options, and now I want to see the peak list because the result is also an annotated peak list. And then you will see all the identified peaks with the name of the compound that was identified. The result is stored at the spectrum. So if you are going into a spectrum area, you have to make a right mouse click on the peak, and then you want to identify this particular peak. Then you will get a list of all compounds that have intensity in this area. In this case, you see this was not matched. Then you can have a look and see why it was not matched. You see here it has some intensity, but from the six areas, three are empty regions, so this was one region where it was not identified. On this tab, you will see all the results again. So this is when you have always all your results in your bag. If you go now to another peak, phenylalanine, right mouse click, identify this peak, then you will see also all compounds that have intensity in this area. And if you are satisfied with this, then you are able to say, okay, I want to confirm yes, that this compound is really there. 
But you can also say no, I don't think it's there, or it's unclear to me. And empty means I did not have inspected this.